In this example, we have the absolute value of x plus 3 over 6 equals to 2. At the moment, there's no numbers in front of the absolute value, there's no numbers behind the absolute value, but we do have a number underneath the absolute value. See how that there's a line underneath the absolute value going beyond the side of the absolute value with a 6 underneath. So we want to get rid of the denominator so we can get the absolute value by itself. So when you have a problem that looks like this kind of fraction, that means you need to get rid of the denominator. Or should I say, now the absolute value do have a number underneath. Just like before, in order to get rid of the denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 6. So again, when 6 divided by 6, that becomes 1. I am left with the absolute value of x plus 3 on the left side. Then over here, 2 times 6 will equal to positive 12. So, I can keep going. Meaning, I'm going to write the inside of the absolute value twice. So the inside is x plus 3 over here and x plus 3 over here. The first one will equal to the original number, which is 12. The second one will equal to the opposite, so negative 12. Now it's time to solve for x. The first one I'm going to subtract by 3 on both sides. So it's going to be x equal to 12 minus 3, 9. The second one, I'm going to also subtract 3 on both sides to solve for x. I'm going to have x equals negative 12 minus 3, that would be negative 15. So here's our two answers. x equals 9. And x equals negative 15. Our two final answers. In this next example, I have the absolute value of 3x minus 1 and then minus 2, the whole thing divided by 5, equal to 2. So, this one we actually have a number that's behind the absolute value while is being divided or should I say the whole thing is being divided by 5. So the first thing you want to get rid of is the denominator, the 5, because again, the 5 is underneath the whole thing, meaning as your value of 3x minus 1 and the minus 2. So we're not going to get rid of the minus 2 first because the 5 is underneath the 2. Now, had it been this, Had it been that, then yes, I would have to get rid of the minus 2 first, then get rid of the 5, the denominator. But over here, the minus 2 is part of the numerator of the fraction, so that means that I'm going to have to get rid of the denominator first. So see the difference? The minus 2 is part of the numerator. This minus 2 is not part of the fraction over here. So. If this minus 2 is not part of the fraction, that's what you're going to get rid of first. But if this minus 2 is part of the numerator, then you need to get rid of the denominator first. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 5. So, when 5 and this 5 divide each other, it becomes 1. I'm going to have just the numerator, which is the absolute value of 3x minus 1 and then minus 2 equal to 2 times 5 which is 10. Now from there I'm going to cancel out the minus 2 because it's behind the absolute value so I'm going to add 2 on the left add 2 on the right so it's going to be absolute value of 3x minus 1 equals to 10 plus 2, which is 12.
since the absolute value does not have numbers in the front, no numbers behind, no numbers underneath, is by itself equal to a positive, I can keep going. So I'm going to write the inside twice. So 3x minus 1 over here, 3x minus 1 over here. The first one will equal to the original number, which is 12. The second one will equal to opposite of 12, so negative 12. All right, time to solve for x. Here, I'm going to cancel out the minus 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. 3x equal to 12 plus 1, 13. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So our answer for this one is x equals to 13 over 3. And there's nothing I can do to simplify. All right, now the work for the second equation. I want to cancel out the minus 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. So now we're going to have 3x equal negative 12 plus 1 will be negative 11. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Here I'm going to have x equals to negative 11 over 3. And there's nothing I can do to simplify the fraction. So our final answer is x equals positive 13 over 3. And then the second answer, x equals negative 11 over 3. Here are our two final answers.